welcome back to the Not Carrie Bradshaw YouTube channel. In this video, I am reviewing, recapping, kikiing, discussing, chopping it up about episode four of House of the Dragon. Thank you for joining me again. This episode was incredibly difficult and cringeworthy to watch. Like, I feel like I watched a lot of it through my fingers or I had to pause it or I had to reach out to a friend like, bitches, you uncomfortable too? Because I really, really was. So let's get right into it. So we're dropped into this episode basically with like flavor of love, but make it Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon. So Rhaenyra is on this international tour to find her boo, you know, who's in the running to become America's next top model. None of these niggas, because everybody was either ridiculously old or comically young. And then like a fight breaks out between like a child and just like a sewer of a person of an older man who's making fun of the child for just basically doing his duty. It's like, why was everyone terrible back then? Like, what were morals? Anyway, Rhaenyra is completely over it and she cuts the tour short. Like, she's like, let's just head back to the house. I'm done with this shit. Like, the king has given her the opportunity to find and choose her own lover. And it's just not going well because this is fictional and this is like hundreds of years ago, but still feels a lot like dating today. Not a whole lot out there, is there, sweetie? So as they pull him back up to the house, so is Damon. Damon is arriving on Dragonback to let his brother know that he has claimed the narrow sea in his name. He bends the knee. This is a huge show of just uncharacteristic humility on Damon's part but we learn really quickly that this is all like a part of a very intentional plan right so the rift between Allison and Rhaenyra seems to be softening a bit Allison is trying to let Rhaenyra know like you are so lucky to be able to choose your own partner and as she's saying this, I think it becomes really clear to Rhaenyra that Allison didn't really have a choice in this. Like her dad pimped her out. It's really what the king says goes. It's also what her father says goes. And Allison is saying, you know, outside of just being the queen, she still wants to think herself like an individual person, but she feels very isolated with this identity as being, you know, Viserys' queen. They express they, they missed each other. And it's nice to see them coming back together. But we know this won't last. I'm getting ahead of myself. So I am deeply uncomfortable saying this. But the truth is there is a vibe between Rhaenyra and Damon from the beginning of this episode Onward. I'm uncomfortable saying that because I recognize that the actor who plays Rhaenyra is an actual adult, but she looks like such a child compared to Damon. So it's not just the incest that makes me uncomfortable. She just looks so freaking young to be having this like flirtatious relationship or whatever with her uncle. Like it's uncomfortable on several levels, right? So Rhaenyra wants to know why Damon really came back to King's Landing. We eventually see why, but she's, um, you know, Damon has a wife that he's abandoned at the Vale, and Rhaenyra is like, you know, your wife is lucky that you didn't put a baby in her because my mom died trying to produce heirs for my father. I don't want to meet the same fate. And Rhaenyra is very fearful of marriage and all that it entails and what those responsibilities are supposed to be. And we also have to keep in mind that like these girls don't really actually know about sex. They know they're supposed to have babies, but it's not like anyone is telling them how that happens or anything. And Damon's perspective is that marriage is merely a political arrangement. Once you're married, you can do whatever you want to do. And Rhaenyra is like, that only applies to men. And Damon is like, not so. And this is foreshadowing what we know comes later in the season. Again, I'm getting ahead of myself. And Damon tells her that you can't live life out of fear because then you'll miss out on the pleasantries of life. And Rhaenyra is like, what pleasantries are there? 
this gives Damon a horrible, disgusting, trifling ass idea. So as an aside, Corliss is still pissed off because Viserys put his daughter aside to marry Alicent. So he is proposing a marriage between um, his house and the free cities of Bravos, which would give him quite a bit of power and would leave the throne kind of vulnerable. So the council decides, like, we really have to make a significant match for Rhaenyra as a show of power. So Rhaenyra is really in the hot seat. Like the pressure is really on for Rhaenyra to select her boo. So <sighs> Damon provides a disguise and instructions for Rhaenyra to sneak out of the castle the back way and meet up with him, right? He wants to show Rhaenyra his version of King's Landing. So they are drinking, they are painting the town red. Rhaenyra has never really been very far outside the castle, let alone out of the eyesight of knights and chaperones and a shit ton of people who are always watching her. So to be among the common folk, this is a culture shock for her. Like, she's like, oh my God, they think I'm a boy. This is so exciting. It was kind of giving like Bow Wow when he thought that he was surprising fans. And it's like, oh, they don't know it's me. And it's like, sweetie, no one cares. Um, which people would care far more that Rhaenyra, the princess, the, you know, soon to be heir to the throne is actually in these streets, right? So... Rhaenyra also discovers through a very trifling play that people aren't really excited with the prospect of her becoming their, um, their queen with her being who Viserys named as heir. And that has to be hard to learn that like people who don't know you really don't see it for you. Um, meanwhile, while Rhaenyra is out here running these streets, Alicent is at home doing her wifely duties. And I think it was important to kind of show this juxtaposition between these two girls who are the same age, but who are living completely different lives. Like Allison been grown for a long time. Okay. She done had two kids. Okay. Like she is a very grown lady and Rhaenyra out here playing. So they wind up in a brothel where Damon seduces her, but then doesn't have sex with her and then abandons her. Right. And She's frustrated, understandably so. She makes her way back to the castle, but she walks in the front door. And Sir Christian Cole is like, girl, how did this happen? Because I've been standing here the whole, the whole time. Like, what the hell going on? Now, this is where things get tricky and kind of trifling, right? Because I didn't think about this the first time, but Rhaenyra ultimately kind of seduces Christian Cole to have sex with her, to be her first. This is an abuse of power. He works for her, but he can't really say no to her because she gave him this position and she is effectively his boss. She is the princess. She is the heir to the throne. Can he really say no? So I think that this was an abuse of power on Rhaenyra's part, but she's also kind of being misled and influenced by Damon, who this is how he just moves and operates the whole time anyway. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to Rhaenyra, several people saw her, inclusive of what we think is a very random ass kid. This kid is not so random, okay? That kid actually works for the owner of the brothel, okay? So... Otto Hightower, the Hand of the King, sorry guys, I'm looking at my notes so I can keep up with everything that happened this episode. So Otto, Otto Hightower is alerted by that random kid, random kid, that the princess was spotted in a brothel with her uncle, they was doing some stuff, and we switch over to a hungover Damon who's being woken up by the owner of the brothel who basically tells him like, I'm in control now. It was giving very much like that thing from that one movie with the pirates where he was like, look at me, I'm the captain now. That was her whole vibe of like, 
I can ruin your whole shit if I want to right now. And I'm still, as I'm saying this, was she in cahoots with Damon to pull off this whole stunt? Or did she just peep tea and now she's using the situation to her advantage? Drop down in the comments and let me know, like, was she a part of this plan that Damon had? Um, or did she just, you know, make use of these kids that are in her employ? I'm, I'm not sure. So Otto has the very unpleasant job of revealing to King Viserys that his brother seduced his daughter in a brothel. And that's a lot of information to take in on several levels. And he is very naive and very reluctant to believe it. And he's like, first of all, come out and plainly say what you're trying to say. It was given very much make it plain, like in the church, make it plain, Pastor, make it plain. And he's upset. He definitely is on some shoot the messenger type shit. He tells Otto to leave. He accuses him of lying, of like, damn, you want to be empowered this badly. Um, because bear in mind, Damon had been telling Viserys to watch out for Otto for a really long time. And the thing is, Otto Hightower is thirsty for power, but he wasn't wrong in this instance. Viserys just wasn't really trying to hear the truth. And the truth is, no, she didn't have sex with her uncle. She had sex with somebody, but it wasn't who they think. Um, Allison overhears this and she's utterly devastated. Allison is one of those girls who takes the rules very seriously. She takes propriety and even from the beginning, um, when before she was, you know, pimped out to the king, Allison has always kind of tried to influence Rhaenyra to take her duty as the king's daughter seriously. Allison takes all this shit. It's giving pick me, okay? She takes all this shit super seriously. So she overhears and she goes and she confronts Rhaenyra. Um, and she's like, please tell me that word on the street is that you was out here in these streets least of all, like, with your uncle, like, tell me this isn't true. Rhaenyra swears on her dead mama's life that her uncle didn't touch her. And I know her mama was like, now, how did I get in it? Like, bitch, just, how you gonna lie like that? Um, and she's like, you know, to question my virtue is an act of treason and all this shit like that, blah, 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 blah. So, Rhaenyra insists that she went out, but she didn't do anything with her uncle. I think that this was a legitimate attempt on Allison's part to help Rhaenyra out. Like, tell me what actually happened. You really shouldn't have been there in the first place, but like, I believe you, blah, 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 blah. Um, again, Allison is trying to impress upon Rhaenyra how significant of a role she plays in the stability of the realm. We need you to have unquestioned virtue so that we can make you a good match so that we can keep the realm stable and everybody can just chill out. Like there are literal lives at stake based on your vagina. And that's a lot of pressure to put on somebody, but it's also like nobody during these times, even in real life, had a good life. The king was constantly under threat of being killed or usurped or whatever. The queen was under constant pressure to bear sons after sons after sons because you had to have an heir and a spare. And back then, infant mortality was just trash. So if you were a noble woman, you had to, God willing, be pretty so that you could be married off to someone. And, you know, so your family could live well off of your vagina. And it's like, even if you were poor and you weren't a noble woman or a noble man, you were constantly at risk of like hunger, death, disease, or being, you know, abused by one of the, nobody was living a good life back then. Okay. But Rhaenyra doesn't really seem to understand how important her behavior is. She's just not getting it. And Alicent is really trying to get her to catch on. So Damon is dragged through, um, dragged to the throne room where Viserys confronts him about his behavior, where he's like, you know, my whole life I have been trying so hard to just protect you, to vouch for you. And Damon is like, nah, you've always kind of made it seem like you were, you know, this like sibling rivalry shit, whatever, whatever. So, um, 
But Sarius is like, you are ruining my daughter's prospects. You know how important this is. And Damon is like, what is the big deal? You're the king, whatever you say, whatever you say goes. And Damon is like, just marry her to me. And Viserys is like, I know you lying. Number one, you still married. And, you know, Damon is like, well, there's a precedent here. Like such and such was also, also had a couple of wives. Like you're the king, you can make this so. And Viserys is like, hell no. Like, and I don't even think that it's so much that the incest part of it or the age part of it is that Damon is not the best match for her. So um, Viserys is pissed bans him from um king's landing and tells him to take his ass back to the veil and figure out how to be a better husband to his wife who he just abandoned in his life um so viserys reveals well after alicent vouches for rhaenyra poor thing not knowing that rhaenyra wasn't telling the whole truth viserys reveals to her the song of ice and fire in the knife and it's like listen it is so important. Your role in all of this is so important. Please take this shit seriously. Like, I don't know what else I need to tell you or what else needs to be given to you. At this point, it's giving spoiled and trifling. And um, he basically tells her that she has to marry Lenor Valerian. Like, I tried to let you do this your way. You can't be trusted you don't seem to understand how serious this shit is. So at this point, you're marrying Lane or Valerian, which I'm sorry, was always the better idea anyway. It never made sense to me why they presented that tiny, tiny child to Viserys anyway when you had a whole Rhaenyra right here and a whole Lane or right here. Like, why wouldn't they just do that from the beginning? And so Alice, I mean, so uh, Rhaenyra is like, you know what? Fine, I'll do my duty, but you got to get rid of Otto Hightower because he's trying to get both of us up out of here. He got people out here spying on me. Like, she's really trying to flip this, but she's also kind of not wrong. And so that's the deal. She will marry Lenore Valerian because this will fix the rift between their between their houses and appease Corliss. And um, also, but you got to get Otto up out of here. Otto Hightower can no longer be the king. So um, Viserys accuses Otto of basically conspiring to become the king. It feels like he was saying that maybe he did something to his predecessor. And I think that he's laying it on a bit thick. It's like you doth protest too much. What the real thing is here is that you, you pee to um, Rhaenyra's tea and you don't want nobody else telling what the truth may or may not be. And so, and also he wants to appease Rhaenyra for this advantageous marriage, which really will solidify a lot of things or so we thought we'll get there. And um, Otto Hightower gets the boot. Ta-ta, sweetheart. And one of the things I, I love, I absolutely love the way this episode ended in that the maester comes through with the plan BT. Um, courtesy of the king because it's like, I don't know what to believe, but I do know that if you did do something, there's a strong chance that you may or may not be pregnant. So we're going to go ahead and just take care of this right now. Um, in case you weren't aware somehow, the tea that the maester prepared induces an abortion should you need one. So it is um, plan B, but make it medieval, make it Game of Thrones, make it House of the Dragon. So it does show that like the king doesn't fully trust her but it's more like a don't ask don't tell we just gonna sweep this under the rug under the rug and everybody gonna move on so that's episode four drop down in the comments let me know what you guys thought of this episode did the owner of the brothel conspire with damon because it's clear that this was damon's plan the whole time damon just wanted to get damon really wants to be on the throne he really feels that he should be um, Viserys' successor and marrying Rhaenyra is a sure way to do that. And I think that he orchestrated this whole thing to put Rhaenyra's virtue up for question and to make him the only obvious solution. And I'm just wondering, was the brothel owner a part of that? Did they intentionally send that? Did they intentionally have that kid there and sent him to the hand of the king to snitch like who all was a part of this plan so drop down in the comments let me know what you guys think and i'll be back with episode five next week love you all thank you for joining me be sure to like comment subscribe share send me money join my patreon and i'll see you guys soon bye